All right, this is Joe and Cola with GrowingYourGreens.com. We have another exciting episode for you. And I'm on a field trip once again. I'm here at Exotica Rare Fruit Tree Nursery to share with you guys some exotic trees and some trees you may want to consider if you're living somewhere in the subtropics. So I guess uh, let's head by the front door and share with you guys more information about the Exotica Rare Fruit Tree Nursery. So now we're at the entrance of Exotica Rare Fruit Tree Nursery. And one of the reasons why I like Exotica is because they have nearly a thousand different varieties of different rare and exotic fruit trees. I mean, I'm all about spreading the genetic diversity and I think it's just far too common that people just plant apples or oranges and there's so many other very interesting and quite delicious fruits that I'm going to be sharing with you guys today. Now I can't cover all 1,000 varieties that they're growing here but I'm going to cover a good handful of the ones that you know you may want to consider growing because they are rare and unique and depending on where you live they may do quite well. So you know we are here in Vista, California. This is like a subtropical, very subtropical uh, climate. Rare, rarely uh, you know gets down past the 32 degree mark and that's why many of these trees will grow here. So if you live in like Michigan, Chicago, you know, most of the things that I'm going to be sharing with you guys in this episode will not work. If you live in Hawaii or South Florida, then yeah, you'd probably be able to grow all these guys. Of course, in the Southern California area, which is where this nursery folks is selling, you know, the, the fruit trees, most of these guys are going to do quite well and you want to consider growing some of them. So anyways, uh, let's come inside to Exotica and give you guys a tour around. First thing is I like is that uh, they are uh, certified organic. So yeah, they use all organic growing practices here. So what I want to share with you guys now is a little tour here and th they have like uh, six acres here. So this is a huge nursery and uh, you know they got signs with where everything is but pretty much if you want something you're going to have to ask them for what you want with all the different varieties. They have so many different things and they know where they all are but coming in new and fresh it's not you know organized like a standard nursery would. In addition besides having over a thousand varieties of fruit trees in pots available for sale they have about 800 plants in the ground, fruit trees in the ground around the property here that's growing that they're actually using as their breeding stock as well as to you know uh, enjoy some of the fruits off of. Uh, the first thing I want to cover is a little uh, fruit tasting station that they have here. So when you come you always want to visit the fruit tasting station because you might learn about a new fruit that you would enjoy eating and that you can actually buy and bring home the tree. I think every nursery should have a fruit tasting station so that you can know what the fruit tastes like before you buy them. So your first stop at Exotica should always be the fruit sampling table here. They always have different in-season fruits available so that you can try, especially if you never tried some of these rare and exotic fruits before. Today I have things like papaya and the Suriname cherries which we're going to look at, the elderberries, some passion fruit, some natal plums some papaya, also tamarind, the carapods, which is actually one of my favorites that we will be looking at in a little bit. And over here we got some Brazilian cherries. This is one of the ones that I'm gonna try. Here's a Brazilian cherry. Now this is not related to the standard cherry you know and love. It's a tropical. Mmm. Quite delicious, and check it out. Three seeds on the inside. To me this kind of tastes a little bit like, a little bit like a plum. The skin's kind of nice and uh, hard, kind of like a plum and really chewy. The flesh on the inside literally melted in my mouth, had an amazing flavor. I'm going to save the seeds and try to grow these guys now. But if you didn't want to wait for the seeds to germinate and grow, you can definitely buy all the different trees of the fruits you're sampling here. That's something I like. I mean, I think every nursery needs to have a sampling station so you could try the fruit trees before you buy them. So besides the fruit tasting station you may also want to look at some of these picture books if you're not familiar with uh, exotic uh, fruits here. They have uh, different pictures of the different varieties of the fruits. Here's like a uh, passion fruit growing and mangoes and here's the panache fig. Look at that man nice and jelly on the inside. Mulberries, more mangoes, passion fruits, here's a star apple, sugar apple, mountain apple, so many different kinds, jackfruit, white wax jambu, durian, mango, and I want to show you guys these right here. These are some of the selections of the guavas that we will look at in a little bit. Indonesian seedless, snow white, giant Thai pink, ruby X, Indian red, yellow strawberry. I mean this is why Exotica you know is really cool to me is because they're literally saving and preserving and spreading the genetic diversity of all these different 
rare edible fruits from around the world that now you have access to that you can just come here as a one-stop shop to get over a thousand different varieties of rare and tropical and a subtropical fruit trees. So while Exotica has many standard plants in pots such as these macadamia nut trees, probably my favorite nut to grow here in Southern California by far. I love the macadamia nut and um, you know a whole area with different you know uh, fruit trees available for you guys. I'm going to kind of give you guys a special tour of the property including some of the trees planted in the ground and some of the plants and trees that I would recommend you guys grow if you live here in uh, Southern California. So the first crop I would grow if I lived down here in Southern California, these guys are known as the Surdom cherries. And uh, let's see, these are the dark purple Lolita. And these ones are actually quite delicious. Let's see if we could see some here. Uh, here are ones not quite ripe here. They need to be nice dark purple and uh, soft. There's one right here, we're gonna pull that guy off. And this is the Surdom cherry. Now this is not related to the standard cherry, but they're called Surdom cherries. They grow excellent in Southern California. Mmm. Nice, sweet flavor, unlike a cherry. And they have multiple varieties. They grow very fast and they're easy to grow and fruit out. Something you definitely want to have in your Southern California garden. Now, what we're looking at is a candy bar tree. Yes, candy can grow on trees. And no, it's not chocolate or cacao. This is my favorite kind of candy that grows on a tree. This is known as the carob pod. And check it out. This thing is loaded with carob, and if you look closely here, man, these things are dripping of the sap. So this is the sap. This is what makes the carob sweet. But as you guys can see, uh, these are not yet ripe. They're still kind of green, and they need to turn brown to be fully ripe and mature and ready to eat. So when the carob pods are ripe, they are absolutely delicious. You literally just eat them, the whole shell and all. Uh, the carob tree is also a, in the legume family, so it's a nitrogen fixer, so it actually enhances the soil that it's being grown in. The carob is actually high in fiber and has just enough sweetness to make it taste really good. And this variety here actually has some nice uh, honey sap inside. And it's definitely important to grow your own because most times you just can't find whole carob pods available in the U.S. If you're lucky enough to live in, you know, uh, Europe, many health food stores actually sell whole carob pods and they're quite delicious. I was in Cyprus and had plenty of fresh carob out of the tree. Some of the best carob I had. Actually, this stuff will grow in places like the Bay Area, even like in Fresno. It's going to thrive and do great. Another one of my favorite trees are these guys right here. You guys can see this is loaded up. This is a mulberry, and they have multiple different kinds of mulberries. I think I see a ripe one up here. There's a little ripe mulberry, not too big yet. It's probably going to be uh, fruiting and uh, in season just in a little bit. Mmm, amazing flavor and just a small little fruit. Mulberries are going to do great Southern California, many parts of Northern California, and even places like Las Vegas. Now we're going to give you guys a special sneak peek tour at the back 40, actually the back three acres. It's not normally open to the public because they're doing a lot of propagation and a lot have a lot of their fruit trees in the ground. I'm going to share with you guys some of the cool ones that they're actually growing here in the back. That's uh, definitely really cool. I mean, this is one of the coolest nurseries because this is more than just a nursery. To me, this is like a full-on fruit botanic garden. I've been to this place called the Fruit and Spice Park in South Florida. I mean, this is the equivalent, in my opinion, on the West Coast. Although, you know, they probably, they're probably they not set up as a park. They're set up as a nursery, and sometimes they give special tours to groups and whatnot of all the different exotic and rare uh, fruit trees they have growing from literally around the world that they collect from all over. So uh, let's uh, head back here and share with you guys some more exotic fruits at Exotica. So now I'm going to show you guys actually one of my favorite fruits and another fruit that's very valuable to grow, especially in these times of drought and you know water restrictions. It actually does well in poor soil with actually very little water. And actually, you don't want to take too good a care of it because then the plant might be susceptible to more bugs and diseases. And it's all underneath this big uh, shade cloth here. What they're doing is they're propagating. Right here, are all the cactus. And they have different kinds of cactus collected from Mexico and California. They have over 20 varieties of the cactus that makes the edible cactus fruits. In addition to the edible cactus fruits, the pads are also edible. Of course, there are some varieties of cactus that are better for eating the pads, and some varieties are better for eating the fruit. You know, and my breakfast today was actually cactus fruit juice, coconut milk, one of my favorite juices of all time. 
And so yeah, they're they're putting these guys under to let them harden off and then callus up and then they're gonna plant them into pots and be able to sell these to people to uh, spread the genetic diversity. And I think that's really important about the work they're doing here at Exotica is, you know, they just don't have, you know, 200 varieties of fruits, you know, they have actually 200 varieties of just pomegranates alone. I mean, one of the largest collection of pomegranates from all over the world, you know, in one place. So actually, let's cover the pomegranates next. This is one of over 800 fruit trees in the ground here on the back 40. And what this is, this is a special variety of the sapote. And uh, they grew this actually, and it's been growing for like 20 years without giving any fruit yet. And, but what it, once it is productive, what they're gonna use this as for breeding stock, and this will be uh, basically air layered, which I'll show you in a minute, and that's how they propagate and make more trees out of an existing tree. And this is some of the trials and tribulations of literally exotic fruit farming. You kind of never know what you're gonna get with some of these crops that come in from all over the world and how it's gonna grow specifically in this climate. So what they've done on many varieties is actually research, they've grown these varieties out and they know how they're gonna perform for you. This is why, in my opinion, it's very important to visit a nursery like Exotica that has real world experience. You know, if you just go to a standard nursery, they're selling fruit trees from some other company and they're not producing them on site, they don't exactly know how they're gonna grow in that specific area. I mean, they know it exotic. I mean, this tree has been in the ground, has not fruited yet, but it is currently flowering, so maybe it'll make some delicious fruit this year after 20 years. So now what we're looking at is an excellent example of what's called air layering. And this is literally how they produce, you know, the same cultivar or same variety of fruit trees to have nursery stock to sell to you guys. And I mean, check it out, once you have an established tree on some of these guys, you could air layer it or propagate it to your, yourself to sell trees to other people or to plant more on your property. And uh, this is what it looks like. As you guys can see, they basically got some tin foil that looks like a ball when you're kids in the cafeteria and you have this and water it up into a ball. And uh, what they do literally is they scar the wood. They basically put some peat moss in there. They wrap it with some like uh, uh, plastic wrap and then they put the uh, the tin foil over it to hold it in place and depending on what kind of tree and how fast it roots they'll basically then take uh, cutters they'll cut this off and then this whole thing goes into a pot uh, with more soil and then it literally will just grow in to a bland, brand new plant and this is one of the ways they use to basically uh, propagate the trees and if you look closely at this tree what this one is right here and this is one of my favorite fruits. This is the lychee nut. Lychee, lychee, lychee. What we're looking at now is a very useful and crop that will do well in many places, whether it's Northern California, Southern California, even places like Las Vegas in the desert heat. This is one of the plants that's gonna do quite well. And this is known as the almighty pomegranate, rich in antioxidants, really delicious flavor. A lot of, no, a lot of people think pomegranates are always tart, but they have plenty sweet varieties here. And uh, these are two unique varieties on either side of me here. I wanted to show you guys this. You can see the uh, pomegranate fruit starting to develop uh, right here. Hey, it kind of looks like a little octopus. Let's draw some eyes on there. But uh, here's the standard pomegranate flower that you guys may be familiar with, but I know you guys are probably not familiar with the uh, flower that's actually next door right here on this pomegranate. And if you look at it, you know, the leaves are fairly similar but the flowers are way different. And check it out, this is a carnation style pomegranate flower. You know, quite beautiful. And when this guy is in bloom, there's just so many flowers on here. And uh, you definitely vouch, wow, that smells amazing. It's like a smell I've never smelled before. I gotta smell it again. It smells kind of floral and just, man, it smells like flowers. It's really cool. Now this variety, it has a really unique and cool flower, but the fruits are small and maybe not so good for eating. So, you know, with the different 200 varieties of pomegranates they have here, you're sure to find one where they want it to have uh, nice, brilliant flowers, nice tart fruit, black fruit, actually, or nice sweet fruit. They got all your bases covered because this is one of the largest selection of pomegranates anywhere in the world available uh, for sale. So one of the fruits that you may not think you could grow in Southern California specifically are these guys right here. This is actually a mango tree producing little baby mangoes that are not quite yet ripe here. And this is a special cultivar actually that has a, a stringless a fruit that's actually quite sweet. 
They have many varieties of mangoes, and I want to let you guys know while you can grow mangoes in Southern California, they are considered a quote unquote experimental fruit. You know, some fruits will produce reliably, and some fruits like the mango, you know, if it gets a little bit tad too cold, they're not going to like it too much. Although I did learn today that there may be some mango varieties out there that could even withstand, you know, the high 20s, you know, and still produce for you reliably. There is a California mango that's commercially available, grown, grown um, known as the Keep Mango, which is definitely one of my favorites. You know, once again, growing fruit at home, the quality is going to always be better than the stuff you buy at the store. It's quite sad that all the mangoes that are imported must be treated either by irradiation or by hot water dipping, which in my opinion, you know, lowers the flavor of the fruit so you don't get that full flavor and that full mango flavor that you would experience if you grew them yourself like you can here in Southern California. And Exotica Rare Fruit Nursery has a variety, one of the largest selection of mangoes, you know, anywhere and we'll show you guys in a little bit, you know, some of the propagation and the little mango seedlings that they're starting to grow out now. So what we're looking at now is one of the many fruit trees here plant in the ground and what we're looking at here is a citrus tree. Now I want to encourage you guys if you have property, don't just grow common trees. I mean, everybody grows citrus trees. How many people grow Chinese mulberries or Mexican guavas or Chinese dates, so many different fruits. And what I think you guys should grow instead of just the common stuff is some unique and rare varieties. And what we're gonna do next in this episode is actually share with you guys some uh, rare and unique varieties that you may want to consider growing that I know I would grow that are some of my favorites that they're offering here at Exotica Rare Fruit Nursery. One of the trees that I would grow definitely if I lived in Southern California are these guys, they're the uh, guavas, and they have like over 10 varieties of different kinds of guavas. You got ones that are pink on the inside, white on the inside, even the purplish color on the inside. And uh, these are what the guavas look like. Now it's quite sad that, you know, if you buy guavas in the store, they're never optimally ripe and they're never gonna develop their full flavor because really, guavas are such a fragile fruit that they need to be picked ripe off the tree so that you can eat them and enjoy them to their maximum benefit. <laughs> now, the one thing, if you do grow a guava tree, you will want to, you know, break open that guava and look inside before you eat it because, you know, I've planned found plenty of guava in Hawaii with the fruit fly larva in there and that wouldn't be too fun to eat. So we're gonna go into one of the greenhouse structures and they have many, they've created different microclimates inside here and uh, different conditions to propagate and grow all the different plants. You guys can see over there they have a, a curry, all the different curry leaf plants that they're growing out over there and uh, over here we're looking at is all these different kinds and varieties of mangoes that are getting ready to uh, sell to the public. So what we're looking at now are many different varieties of the guavas that I like so much. And check it out, man, they got some good prices here. Now, the price of the plants or the trees you buy will be dependent on how old the plant is. These are actually quite uh, young guava trees here growing. And these are only five bucks for, you know, the nice small size. Of course, as the trees get larger, as they move up in pot sizes, then they cost a lot more money. So I always encourage you guys, if you have a lot of money, buy the biggest pot size and plants that you can afford because they're gonna be more fruitful, producing poundage for you earlier rather than later. Of course, if you don't have so much money, you wanna get off your chair right now and come down to Exotica and start buying the cheap plants and plant them now so that they'll be fruiting earlier rather than later and you'll also be saving a bunch of cash. So this is one of the propagation greenhouses here where they got all the baby plants now. You know, one of the cool things is about Exotic is many nurseries may just resell other people's plants at Exotic here. They start many of their own, actually probably the majority of the plants they start, graft, uh, air layer, or actually start from seed themselves. As you guys can see here, it's just all these little baby plants all over. And I mean, they just have tons of plants. So here's one of my favorite trees besides just the fruit trees that they're offering here. And these are little baby Moringa uh, trees. These Moringa trees uh, actually produce edible pods known as drumstick uh, for people that are uh, from India. But also the leaves are actually quite edible and one of the most nutritious leaves that a tree grows that you can just literally just pick and eat. Now they have a nice uh, uh, flavor to them, like a little bit spicy. So what I prefer to do is actually uh, when the trees get large, I like to cut off the baby leaves, dehydrate them, and then powder them up so that I can have my own Moringa leaf powder any time of year. Now, if you go to a health food store, they're gonna try to sell you Moringa leaf powder for like $50 a pound, but easily in Southern California, places where you don't get 
frost or minimal frost, you're going to be able to easily plant these in the ground and grow them year after year to provide endless amounts of uh, food for you, for you and your family. Now we're going to show you guys how they start some of the tropical seeds. Now tropical seeds, you know, they don't like cold weather. They need nice warm weather. So that what they've done is inside this uh, little uh, hoop house we're in, they created a secondary greenhouse with plastic up and they got these big boxes and this is to keep the animals out. In addition, they got these screens underneath here and uh, they got all the little plant starts uh, growing in there, all the seeds. And you could lift this uh, wire mesh stuff up right here and they could have access to all the little baby plants underneath here. They're starting so many different varieties of trees and plants. Here's a whole bunch of moringa coming up and uh, different kinds of uh, crops including the holy basil and so many different kinds of things in here. There's some red sugar apples. This is nice and warm in here. It's kind of like how I like to sleep at night. Nice and warm. And uh, this is where the uh, tropical fruits germinate the best. Once they get larger, they're going to take these guys out and put them in the uh, greenhouse to raise them until they get larger. And then they'll probably end up going outside and available for sale to you guys. Here's another one of my fruit tree picks that you will definitely want to grow if you live here in Southern California in Hawaii. I love them a lot and they grow great there, but they also grow great here. And they're actually quite inexpensive and will fruit, you know, soon enough and provide you a nice beautiful tree with lots of food for you guys to eat. What it is is right here. This is actually called the ice cream bean. It actually, uh, we'll get one in a second. We'll get a ripe one. This is not quite ripe, but look at these. Uh, beautiful flowers on here. I like the uh, foliage on here and there's some of the new growth But these are an amazing edible fruit that literally money cannot buy you can't go to the farmers market and buy ice cream bean You know unless you have your own tree You're not gonna be eating them if you live in California and here in Southern California It's something very easy to grow that's gonna grow fast and more importantly the trees are actually inexpensive to purchase so that everybody should be growing an ice cream bean and then I'll come over your house and be your best friend when they're uh, ripe and in season. So now we have a ripe ice cream bean and I want to share with you guys what it looks like on the inside. You could twist these guys apart but I'm going to go ahead and uh, basically uh, peel this guy apart and kind of reveal kind of like opening an oyster or something. All the seeds on the inside but why, why we're opening is not the seeds that actually start to sprout and germinate inside so you can actually plant these seeds and have your own ice cream bean tree but what I'm after is inside around the seed actually is this little uh, fruit pulp and this is fruit pulp it's like this cotton candy style consistency kind of like light and fluffy watery and actually quite sweet let me go ahead and taste this one mmm so delicious definitely one of my favorite fruits to eat in the whole wide world that I rarely get to have and I'm glad that Exotica is making them available for people here. So that'll bring us to the end of this episode here at Exotica and uh, what I'm standing next to now is uh, the plumeria. It's not edible or nothing but it has an amazing scent. If I lived here in Southern California I'd be planting a plumeria outside my bedroom window so when the wind wafted in it'd be smelling like uh, plumeria is inside the house and plumeria is actually a flower not a scent you know in perfumes. You know, I want to encourage you guys to get back to nature, whether it's growing your own scents, growing your own fruits, which is more important to me, and eating them. You know, an Exotica allows you to do that with over 200 different varieties of unique, rare, and tropical, subtropical fruit trees from around the world. Hopefully, if you guys live in the Southern California area, you may want to take some of my recommendations that I shared with you guys in this video, because surely enough, if I did have property in Southern California, some of the ones that I shared with you guys today are the ones that I would personally plant myself in my garden. I hope that you guys plant some fruit trees and uh, invite me over, uh, you know, when they're ripe and I'll be coming and scarfing on all your fruit. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. Once again, my name is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com. We'll see you next time. And remember, keep on growing.